62. Point, right, and then only Indian Point 1 at that time, which That's now right. is 2 and 3. And here are the, the ships laid out. These are World War II cargo vessels uh, for the most part. There were as many, the, the, the number fluctuated because they were always coming and going. Almost as many as uh, 300, about 280 something. And uh, sometimes they were down to 250 and then they went down as time went by less and less. Now I don't remember them as the Liberty ships. We remember, in Peak School we used to call them the Mothball Fleet. Yeah. Is that true? Is that still? Yeah, uh, that's right. The Ghost that was Fleet. The, the, the Ghost fleet, fleet was another one. That's right. And if I can give you a little bit of background on that. Go ahead. And it was news to me when I found this out that not only were the ships here stored by the, uh, by the Naval Reserve after World War II, right. they did the same thing after World War I. Oh. And here there was a picture in, a, in the newspaper here, Peekskill's War Fleet at last to leave. They're talking about 1925. And they were bought by Henry Ford for scrap. Oh, for the... So uh, here they are. They no had kidding. almost as many then, let's see, about 200 yeah, about, steel about ships. 200. Hold that one up to the... To the uh, Should I? Just put, yeah, just put it yeah, like it's, that. It's sure. hard to get a... A good uh, shot on a news article. Yeah. See, it doesn't really work. Too yeah, well. he bought. He looked at it, Henry Ford bought it for 1.7 million, and there were 200 steel ships. So anyway, this was World War One. So uh -huh. again, after World War Two, they did the same thing. Sure. Now the Hudson River wasn't the only location. They had uh, let's see how many different. Uh, so in other words, spots. they came here after the war, but then. After that, was what it, were these then sold, or were they just? Well, let's back up a little bit. Uh, it goes back to World War II. Uh, some people are familiar with, uh, the, you know, when the Nazis were attacking England, and FDR sent the Lend-Lease, that is the cargo supplies. Right, right. These were the ships. These were the cargo oh, ships. Oh, no kidding. And apparently, the way it goes, you know, because some of the way they were thinking in that. Yes, day, yes, yes. The 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 Germans were, were were torpedoing and blowing up so many boats that. They figured if we could outproduce them and just send so many in mass, they can't knock them all down. No and that's exactly what happened. So we, so we had, uh, who knows how many of these? There were uh, 2,751 built altogether between 1941 and 45. Mm -hmm. It took uh, in the average of 42 days to build, and they were popping them out three a day. No, every three days, one was uh, one produced was being built. in 18 shipyards yeah. around the country. <clears throat> I found an interesting uh, little anecdote on this thing. We're going to jump around on this. There's that's, no, that's no fine. reason to be chronological. That's fine. You're always so interesting. And, and so the, that's that um, uh, uh, Peekskill was one, I think, seven different locations for what they called the National Defense Reserve Fleet. Mm -hmm. See, this is a Department of Commerce, Maritime yeah, just Administration. Just hold, hold that up very, very quickly for the audience. And, um, well, again, this newspaper thing doesn't really... Uh, right. Well, it's okay. Just so oh, you can see it's an official yeah. uh, document, and yeah. it outlines where these boats were. Hmm is that after the war, well, some were used, by the way, for Vietnam, and some were used for Korea, mm -hmm. again, for cargo, because they were huge, uh, strong vessels. The average capacity was 10,000 tons, 10,000 tons. I looked up what they were carrying. Uh, by the way, they were steam engine boats. They carried airplanes, tanks, locomotives, jeeps, uh, and tons of ammunition and food and everything else that went along to supply the war effort. So, so their hulls were big enough or strong enough that they could yeah. handle all these and, uh, uh, big They had big a crew of 45 and they were also armed. There was a naval armed guard on the boats and they had certain weapons that they had, averages many, like the Marines would be. Sure. Like 20 on each boat. Uh, 200 were lost during the war. Uh, some uh, had uh, def defects in the construction. Uh, but most of them were uh, hit by mines, uh, torpedoes, or uh, kamikaze planes when what, they were in the Pacific. Well, did, you, did you say that originally they, they made 2,000 of these? Uh, 2,700 and some and, and only 200 were sunk? Yeah. Wow, that, that's actually... Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. Considering the going, you know, with how the Germans yeah. were, were blowing them up yeah. one left and right, that's No, that's it was good... a tremendously successful effort. That's sure. one of the reasons we did succeed in that war as well as we did. Of course, civilians did all this work. Right. You know, civilian patriots. We tend to overlook that. You know, right. We usually look at the military part of things. Sure, sure. I wanted to mention that after well, the war... Well, that goes almost with, like, with, with the old Rosie the Riveter and... Ah, uh, uh, good point. Remember? That's a very good... I'm glad I, you mentioned I heard that. is... Is that is that true that, ro that it was down in Terrytown? That's right. And actually, there was the Rosie the River. It was actually someone from Peekskill is what I heard. It was a Rose a, Hickey. Rose Hickey, exactly. Yeah. And oh, she and so a partner. It's not, it's not legend. I mean, in it's, it's uh, Terrytown, that was the uh, the aircraft division, uh, General Motors, right, uh, producing the airplanes. They were small bombers. Correct. And she said they set a riveting record, and they received the citation from from President Roosevelt. Ah. So that was the official one, as far as we know. And later, it was Norman Rockwell that painted that famous uh, poster right. called Rosie the Riveter. Was the name was uh, Eastern Aircraft? I believe. That's was right. The, uh, right. That's right. Right. My mother worked down there as well. 
Yeah, yeah so, you know, as a women, uh, because the men went off to the war, uh, you know, the women could work in these factories. Sure, sure. Well, not only that, don't forget, all the men are over there, they're, they're being sent overseas to, to fight the, the campaigns. Yeah. So, we, you know, we needed still labor here to put the yeah. Lucy's out. So at that time, there was that big push to, yeah. for the women to go work in the factories, which... You know, um, which was on, not unheard of, but at that time, you know. Well, they were they were needed as, yeah, a, as a labor force. Exactly. And exactly. They, they also liked to learn to trade, so they went in there and did that type of sure. thing. After the war, the question was, okay, what to do with them? Well, they were stored. Essentially, this is a type of active storage because they're still in the water. Mm -hmm. They had certain underwater uh, systems to keep the barnacles off, and they were inspected occasionally. Sometimes they were filled with grain, right. you know, for storage, a surplus of something like that. I, I came across this interesting little tidbit that, uh, that the uh, Aristotle Anassis, the Greek uh, shipping uh, uh, owner, right. bought uh, 526 of these. Hmm. And that's how he got into the big time with the, with the shipping business. Oh, no kidding. He was using old Liberty ships. He retrofitted ships. these. And the Italians bought 98, so somebody else over there you know, was doing that after the were, war. And then the, the remainder were... Uh, well, uh, they're, well, again, they, some went to Korea, some didn't maybe come back, uh, some others went to Vietnam. Oh, I see. And they, they were sold off so bit by bit. So through attrition, little pieces. And then by, they finally uh, were uh, sold uh, in 1970 or so, mostly to uh, Japan to make the Toyotas and the Datsuns. Oh, and the, just so the, yeah. the same idea. And that's where the little before. cars came in. Where we're, they were getting recycled right. from the old Liberty City. So they, they basically sold it for the iron for the scrap. Yeah, they, that's they, right. They smelted it down yeah, and melted it down. Yeah, the steel iron, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And things were on there. Well, that's Henry Ford's plan was where he bought the, in, yeah, out of the same First idea. World War. Where he, same exactly. Idea. So, so he was, uh, all the Model Ts, uh, 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 all their metal came from these uh, scrap heat, uh, the multiple Well, those heat. are the World War I version. World War I it. version, yes. correct. It's good to recycle, and uh, you know, they recycle them big time in those days. Sure. There's a lot of money in scrap, mm -hmm. you know, especially this type of thing. I want to point out, since we're in Yorktown, okay. uh, there's a Yorktown man who contacted us uh, quite a while ago mm -hmm. about his own experiences with this fleet. His name is John Potanovic, and uh, he lives here in Yorktown Heights. Hmm. And he used to work on the fleet when it was off uh, Tarrytown, then it was moved up to Jones Point. And uh, he later uh, uh, took the civil service test for Yonkers Police and became a policeman mm -hmm. and uh, stayed with the Yonkers uh, Police Department for 27 years, retired as a captain in 1974. And here he's telling his story about he was initially involved with this and that the, you know, they had to be uh, brought up the river and he was part of that. That whole business there. So a local person was actually involved with that, the, the mothballing right. of this fleet then. And um, let's see, what else do we have here? Well, did the, we have, I don't know. If so this, how long did they stay on the Hudson River? If this will work. Well, from, for, until about 1970 or so. And they were brought in when? Right after uh, the war? Right after the war, 46. So 46. I'm just going to, gonna, this is okay. You can see, you know, some of the big bows here. They're actually, uh, um, how empty they are. So you can see the... Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there. right along, I, I guess I'm just whatever. Just going to run through these things here. Yeah. What is Oop, it? Right along. A little bit of glare there. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Oh, ah, that's better. There you go. Here's a man on board, yep. you know, looking at a log or something like that. Probably a merchant marine. Yeah, similar to that, and uh, it's a naval reserve fleet. Actually, they had their own employees, and here's one right here, and some of these people are identified. And by the way, they were all named for famous Americans, mm. historical. Uh, well, people. that one says Gannett, so I'm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the Gannett newspaper. The, the Gannett newspaper. Yeah, he was a man from upstate New York. Mm -hmm. And just two more and see if this works out. Here are the two guys on board showing the layout. They're probably in, you know, in charge of something or other there. Yeah, he looks like a boiler room operator. And these are the last two ships to leave. Here they are towing them away. Oh, no so kidding. essentially that was the end of the Liberty ships or Mothball Fleet or Ghost Fleet, mm -hmm. at least in the Hudson River. They were, they were kept in other places around the country. Uh, but... It's all gone now, and so it's a part of history and sure, some sure. people's memory. Uh, right now, actually, or at least I thought, the last time I did a drive-by, that is what, 9, I guess, W or D, I forget it's which nine, one. It's uh, 9 W, I believe. I believe they have an anchor. Yes, that's and right. And there's a, one of the chains that brought the anchor down. Yeah. And what they did is they made it into almost like a little monument, monument there. That's so right. if anybody ever wants to take, right. a, take a ride on down, uh, it's always Yeah, there. usually when you're heading toward the bridge, it's easier to get in there because when you're barreling down the hill, you just usually yeah, keep you gotta going. Yeah, you got to kind of overshoot it. But yeah, but yeah that's where it was. From the Bear Mountain Bridge, I think it's maybe about a four-mile, three-mile ride, not, not even yeah, that much, just, something like that. Yeah, it's in that range. 
All right, so let's go to our third uh, topic then, as we were talking about before. So it's the 1930s 